She lives for now. Hi everybody, Carla here, and I know it's been a long while since I've done one of these. As you might imagine, I'm doing a PhD right now. It's really hard, it takes up a lot of time. I don't really have a lot of free time to record videos of any kind, so... <laughs> yeah, that's mainly why uh, I've been away for so long, but also, we're in the middle of a pandemic, in case you didn't know, you know, spoiler alert. We're in the middle of a pandemic and there's really not much in the way of content coming out, at least as far as theaters are concerned. I've been watching a lot of TV, I've actually been making a lot of headway with my to watch list when it comes to TV. It's kind of scary now because I feel like I might run out of stuff soon, which I never thought would be possible. but. It is a thing now, apparently. But I, I've been watching some TV, but nothing has really stood out because I mostly watch stuff late, you know? So, like, what's the point in me doing a video for something that came out last year? <laughs> so it's it's kind of a weird thing, but I if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know everything that I'm watching. So, yeah, it's you've heard me comment about that or read me comment about that if you follow me on Twitter, so be sure to do that. But I don't think there's been enough for to warrant like me doing an actual full video for anything. So um, it's it's been a while since I've done one of these. I do hope that you guys are all staying safe. You know, wear your freaking masks for God's sake. Wash your hands. Stay inside as much as possible. This pandemic is not a joke. This virus is not a joke. It's not a hoax. It's a real thing that is happening and that might take your life or the life of someone you love so please 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 be careful i hope you're all being safe and um heeding uh the orders your local orders because it's it's a big deal as you can see from the different background that i have now i moved again um i'm still in australia we just moved to a different apartment so slightly different you know change of scenery <laughs> As it might be but I I've been mostly just staying in you know working as much as I can um, worrying a little bit because you know everybody I love is back home and things are getting kind of gnarly over there so <laughs> a little bit worried but you know not so much and yeah like I said I've been following up on fandoms and watching new things I've watched some really great things lately just nothing that was that made a big enough impact, I guess, for me to make a whole video about it. But something did happen recently, and by recently I mean like a month ago, <laughs> I'm late on this as well, that I really want to talk about. And it's gonna be a short video, I'm actually just going to, I'm going to record two videos today and try to keep them as short as I can, but I, there are things that I feel like I need to talk about. And the first one is that it's basically been confirmed now, or it, it, it was a, as of last month, confirmed that J.K. Rowling, who wrote Harry Potter, very famous, if you don't know her, you've been living under a rock for the last 20 years, J.K. Rowling is transphobic. <laughs> and I know that a lot of people have talked about this on line you know on the internet a lot of people will talk about it better than i have and honestly i will drop a few links in the description so that you guys if, if you want to get more information about what happened and why she's wrong and, and why we say that she's transphobic there are many people who have touched on this uh, much better than i have and of course i'm not trans i'm a cis woman and I'm, I'm not in the LGBT community really at all. I, I consider myself a straight ally. And I'm not going to sit here and go point by point on the things that J.K. Rowling has said and done 
over the past few months that have made people realize that she's a transphobe. Like I said, many people have done that much better than I ever could. From the point of view of someone who is in the LGBT community or who is trans. So I'm gonna put some links down in the description so you guys can go see it. There's tons of people like Jesse Gender and you know, a bunch of people out there whose videos I watched who are so educational about these things and I I won't touch upon what exactly she said because first because I couldn't explain it any better than they already have and second because I don't want to give her any more notoriety like I don't want to amplify what she's already said which not only do I not agree with I think is just misguided and even manipulative up to a point because if you read her stuff like for example that essay that she published I, I know people who are great people who are friends of mine and who are not transphobic who read her her stuff and think well she's just defending women right she, she's defending women that's that's totally fine and they don't see that there's the darker background to that because they're just not as informed and I, I think it's very important not to give those people a platform a, a, a wider platform than they already have because JK Rowling has the biggest platform in like the, the world at least as far as fandom goes you know she doesn't need me to amplify her message at all especially if I don't agree with that message so I, I, I don't want to take any part in normalizing anything she said I just I think it's wrong and I will let experts in the field just explain this to you and explain why it's wrong everything that she said or most of the stuff that she said is wrong and that's it I, I don't want to dignify her her spiel really because it's what she was I, I don't want to dignify that with any more of, of, of my time of your time or any anything like that I just want to make the point that it is i mean people suspected this for a while but now it's sort of like out there like she really does believe this way it's not like some you know mistake that she made no she really does believe this and as someone who is a fan of harry potter and who has been such a fan of harry potter for such a long time like in my circle of friends i was that one girl everybody pointed to when anybody mentioned Harry Potter like oh that's that's Carla that's Harry Potter girl like she knows everything about Harry Potter that was me I was a part of the Harry Potter fandom for over a decade I wrote so much fanfic I read so much fanfic I made so many great friends in the Harry Potter fandom and to to look back on what's happening now with J.K. Rowling it's not only incredibly disappointing you know because through the years being in this fandom you sort of feel like like you you know who the author is you know like you you've read her 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 work and you've analyzed it so thoroughly and and you you kind of get a sense of who that person is and and not only is it disappointing to know that she's not who i thought she was it's it's also almost it almost makes one feel like one did something wrong you know like why didn't i see that coming and my point with this video is just to 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 talk, to talk more about what like how what happened with jk rowling is affecting us as fans um there's been a lot said about you know death of the author and whatever and I, I genuinely don't think that there is a right or wrong way to be a Harry Potter fan right now. Like everything just feels so weird. Like I, I'm afraid to even watch anything Harry Potter, to read anything Harry Potter, to, 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 to mention Harry Potter at all because it's, it's weird. I don't want to feel like I'm defending her 
because I, I don't want to defend her in any way. But it's also strange because Harry Potter has been such a part of my life for so long, so it's, it's really strange right now. And I think everybody processes it in a different way. And I don't think there's a right or wrong way. But I do want to make some points. Before I talk about this though, I just want to say right off the top or, you know, 10 minutes into the video, but whatever. I just want to state it clearly for everybody out there. Trans women are women. Trans men are men. Non-binary people are non-binary. And they should all be respected. Their existence is valid. Misgendering is wrong. And it's okay if you don't know anything about the trans community. I don't either. You know, I'm 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 cis. I I've been cis, you know, like since I was born. That's I've never had that experience of of knowing that I'm something different than my body. I don't know how that feels. I will never know how that feels. But I have to respect other people's experiences. And because of that, I support trans people. I support non-binary people. I think what JK Rowling believes is wrong. And moreover, I don't think there's any reason why feminism and you know, trans people should be at odds with each other at all. You know, it's it's not a thing. I'm a feminist and I'm also a trans ally. And that is perfectly okay. There's nothing contradictory about it. So I just wanna make that very clear. And if if I have any trans members of my audience listening right now, I'm so sorry because I know so many of you are Harry Potter fans and are have been devastated through this and I I just want to say how sorry I am. I hate that there's still people in the world in the year of our Lord 2020 who think these things. And I I hope that someday JK Rowling realizes how wrong she's being right now. And I just I'm 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 really sorry this is happening. It's the world sucks, what can I say? If there's anything 2020 has taught us is that the world is a terrible place but I, I I just I really I feel so sorry that this is happening to you guys and I know and believe that trans people are resilient and I will always be here to support you in any way that I can I, I probably am not able to do much I'm just one this person so my power in this is very limited but I just want to say that I support you anyone needs to talk about any of this I'm here for you to lend you an ear and you know just chime in if, if you think that this is this is a big issue if you have anything to say just just chime in in the comments I'm here for that I just want to touch really quickly then on this whole thing of what do we do about Harry Potter now because it's <laughs> you know if you if you follow me on Twitter you were probably subject to a barrage of like Stan Rick Riordan posts which I do not regret those for a moment you should Stan Rick Riordan he is awesome but the truth is and he has said this himself the truth is that nobody's perfect you know, I have my biases. I, I try to be as open-minded as I can, but I have my biases. And so does Rick Riordan, and so does everyone. So you will never find anyone who is 100% completely unproblematic. So the, the thing comes down to where do you draw the line? For me, sure, I will not agree with Rick Riordan in everything, but the things I might I might disagree with him on are not deal breakers for me. J.K. Rowling being transphobic is a deal breaker for me. I don't I 
I feel I don't feel like I can support her anymore um, after knowing this. But what does that tell me about Harry Potter? Because a lot of people have made the point, and I agree that you can't just retroactively make yourself not love something, especially something like Harry Potter, which has been a part of our childhood for so many of us. It was for me and it was for so many of us. They were my favorite books when I was growing up. Harry Potter was a phenomenon, okay? It it brought back reading. You don't understand. When I was in the 90s, when when I was, you know, in, in my early teens, kids reading was not a thing. That wasn't a thing. So when Harry Potter came and took the world by storm, everybody, it, it was it was a huge deal that kids were reading again and I think that's really important and I think that's something you cannot take away from Harry Potter and because of that it, it has stayed in our hearts for so long it taught us lessons that we needed when we were growing up hell Harry Potter taught trans people that it was okay to be different you know that's one of the that's one of the reasons why trans fans are so upset right now it's because does that mean the reason the, the the lessons that harry potter was teaching us were you know fake or whatever or it only applies to a certain person or you know if i'm reading my if i'm finding a bit of myself in this narrative does that mean that i was wrong because jk rowling obviously didn't intend it that way i I, I, like I said, I don't think you can retroactively make yourself not love something. I will never not love Harry Potter. I, I don't want to have kids. I, this is, I've been very open about this everywhere. I don't plan on having kids at all. But I understand that there are some people who, who look at this and say, okay, J.K. Rowling is transphobic. Does that mean I can't, you know, read Harry Potter to my children? Or what like I, I know some people were really excited to to have their kids reach the appropriate age for the Harry Potter books so they could pass the love on does that mean they can't do that anymore that's you know it's very sad because there are good things in Harry Potter there are many many good things and there are very important lessons that they can teach kids that now are going to be missing because we have to go on this campaign against JK Rowling and a lot of people think that's an overall loss you know what I mean it's like there's a line in I was watching Footloose the 2011 remake a couple days ago I love that movie, by the way. It's one of the few movies that I love more than the original. The few remakes that I love more than the original. But there's a line in that movie where Ariel, who's the, the leading uh, female character, yells at her father because her brother died. Uh, and when her brother died, uh, coming home from a party where there was dancing, after there was the accident, her father band dancing so everybody <laughs> in the town for all you know everybody under 18 in the town and she yells at her dad this is three years after the the accident happened she's yelling at her dad and saying bobby was so good and i and we loved him so much and he was so great but now every time i think of bobby all i can think of is the accident and that is your fault it's, I'm paraphrasing by the way, but it's kind of like that, you know, like has, has JK Rowling retroactively painted the entire Harry Potter franchise, you know, not just the books, but the movies, the merchandise, the everything, the fan fiction, everything. And I don't, again, I don't, I don't know that there's a right or wrong way to, to see this. I understand why for some people it is. It is tainted. Some people just cannot think or t 
talk about or or enjoy Harry Potter anymore and while well, that's very sad it's it's their you know their way of dealing with it if every time you're going to think of Harry or Hermione or Ron or any of the characters or any of the scenes or you know any of the things that Harry Potter taught you if every time you think of them you associate it with J.K. Rowling then yeah maybe you're going to lose that part of your life and it's, it's terribly sad but it's the way you feel and feelings are not rational you know I, I I can't tell you no you should still love Harry Potter because Harry Potter can be totally separate from the author that's up to you I can't tell you how to do that however for me personally and, and this is really tricky because I'm, I'm literally sleeping on Harry Potter bed sheets right now <laughs> it's so weird like I have I don't have my Harry Potter books here but like my my wallet is a Deathly Hallows wallet <laughs> I was just looking at it today like I, I have so much Harry Potter stuff I've gotten so much merch I've been to the theme parks and loved them like I've been to the theme parks in th in three different Two different? I've been to Orlando and in Japan as well. <laughs> like, there's, I, it's been, I've been to so many places. I went to the London studio tour. I've seen all the movies. I've done like midnight release parties. It's, it's, I can't stop loving Harry Potter for what it is. However, that is my personal emotional reaction to it. Because I feel that in the hypothetical case that I, hi that I ever have kids, which I don't plan to, but let's say I do, I feel like reading the books themselves is not something I associate with J.K. Rowling anymore. I could, I mean, I, I know some people do, and that's okay. But I, I don't, because I spent so much time in the fandom I wrote so much fanfic, I read so much fanfic, I discussed every detail in the books with so many different people, I made friendships, that Harry Potter for me became this thing apart from, from just what Rowling put in the pages of the books. So when I think of Harry Potter, I think of Harry Potter as an entity. Uh, uh, you know, as a, as, as a thing on its own. Like when I think of Star Wars, I don't necessarily think of this this thing that was created by George Lucas. It's taken on its own um, sort of life after Lucas. And it's the same with J.K. Rowling. And J.K. Rowling cannot tell me how to think. J.K. Rowling cannot tell me how to interpret her writing. So it might be impossible to completely separate the author from the book like I, I don't know that I believe in the death of the author necessarily I don't I don't I don't think we can just say like oh Harry Potter just wrote itself it's not a thing JK Rowling wrote it but once a book or a movie or any piece of media really is out there you cannot tell people how to interpret it and this is actually one of the few things that made me a bit weary of JK Rowling even from the beginning like back when the books ended and she started doing all these interviews and stuff and revealing all these details that she didn't include in the books like you know Dumbledore is gay that sort of thing it's like oh okay it's good but why didn't you put it in the books then like if people want to assume that Sirius and Remus were gay and in love with each other, she can't tell you not to do that. You know, it's you. If people want to assume that, I don't know, Ginny Weasley is trans, she can't tell you not to do that. I can't tell you not to do that, even if I disagree with you. And that is something that I learned from the fandom, from all the discussions I saw I had in the fandom, from all the fanfiction I ran, I, I, I read in the fandom, from all the videos I watched in the fandom. People will think different things, and people will interpret different things 
in different ways. And none of that is wrong. That is normal. It's what happens when you put something out into the world. It, legally speaking, it's still yours, but intellectually speaking and emotionally speaking, it's to every single one of your audience members, it's a different thing and it means a different thing. And J.K. Rowling can't tell you what that different thing is. She can't just impose her way of thinking on you. And in that sense, I am very attached to my Harry Potter. You know, the, the world of Harry Potter as I've interpreted it, as I've analyzed it, as I've related to it. That's not something J.K. Rowling is in any way connected to. So can I just stand here and say, you can't love Harry Potter anymore, it's tainted. I can't do that. I can't stop loving Harry Potter. I will just have to love my Harry Potter apart from J.K. Rowling. So that's what I'm choosing to do. And I think it's a very personal decision. I can't tell you what you should do. Um, it's a very individual decision and I, I'm not here to shame anybody for what they choose. It's, it's very personal. I'm not going to, you know, it's, I, I, my decision in the end is I will keep every Harry Potter thing that I own from the books on down to every piece of merch that I have because you know a lot of people are like oh you have we have to burn the Harry Potter books now and I'm like that's that's stupid you already gave her your money it's like the, the dumb Kaepernick jersey thing that conservatives were doing like back a few years ago when Colin Kaepernick started kneeling and they're like I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy a jersey so I can burn it on YouTube like dude that's so stupid it's <laughs> you're still giving them giving him their money your money so it's it, like I'm not gonna go out and burn the Harry Potter books I don't know that I can reread them right now but I haven't re I haven't reread them in ages anyway so it's not like this is something new and I might not be able to reread them for a little bit but I'm not throwing them out I'm not burning them if you know if if I can share my love of Harry Potter with a younger relative I will I don't think there's anything wrong with that as long as I make sure that I'm also teaching them to love trans people to support trans people and why JK Rowling is wrong you know, I, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. So I, I'm gonna keep my merch, uh, what I have right now. Um, I'm not going to get depressed every time I see my Deathly Hallows wallet. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be totally okay sleeping on Harry Potter bed sheets. What I'm going to do though, and this is where the death of the author thing matters, I think, is that I don't, I don't feel comfortable supporting JK Rowling with my money anymore and <laughs> this is hilarious because you know how the left is always accused of being like socialist and whatever we know how to use our money for boycotts <laughs> i don't intend to buy anything harry potter if somebody gives something to me I, i'll take it because it's rude not to do it but i i don't intend to to buy any more harry potter merch I don't intend to buy any of her books anymore. I, I just, knowing what I do, I don't feel comfortable giving her any more of my money. Um, and believe me, even if the stuff you buy of her is like nothing in, in comparison to the, you know, fortune she's already made, <laughs> because it's not, everything you buy that is related to Harry Potter does give her a bigger platform because there are metrics for these things if like if you if stores sell a lot of Harry Potter merchandise they will order more and that goes to her pocketbook so I I will definitely not be supporting anything she sells I won't read any of her books I I you know I I can't do that i can't go that far i will always love harry potter and i you know that is 
despite JK Rowling, not because of JK Rowling, but I don't have to give her my money anymore. So I will not do that. Uh, and instead, if you know, if I really want some Harry Potter thing, some Harry Potter piece of merchandise, I will probably just use that money and donate it to a to an institution or an organization that supports trans people. They deserve it more. The the point of the theme parks was brought up. I I think the theme parks are particularly a, a very particular thing for me because I like I said I've been to the theme parks in at least two continents. <laughs> um, I've been to the studio tour. I probably wouldn't go into the studio tour anymore because the studio tour was just about Harry Potter. The theme parks though, because I would totally go to Universal Studios again, absolutely. Uh, you know, every time I go to Orlando I have to go to Universal Studios and there's so much in Universal Studios apart from Harry Potter that it's, it's a commitment, you know, it's, those things are so expensive that to go there and not like it completely ignore that one section or to not go there anymore just because they have the Harry Potter section. It feels a little extreme and you know if I'm already there and I've already spent that much money I don't see the point. I wouldn't buy any merchandise though like I wouldn't go into the souvenir stuff and get a that store and get a wand. By the way the ones were always way too expensive for me so I'm like I'm not paying that much for a piece of not even wood it's plastic so yeah um, not buying anything uh, maybe food because you know it's if it it's there and you you know you've been in the park all day you get hungry probably okay to buy food but I wouldn't buy anything I don't need or there I wouldn't buy any merch I would I would still go and I would still enjoy it because I, I still love Harry Potter, but it, it's a tricky thing because I, I don't know how I'm going to feel standing there. Um, but I do know that Universal Studios is very fairly supportive of progressive beliefs. They employ a lot of trans people and I'm sure they're gonna make sure that at least their section of the park trend um, in, in that section of the Harry Potter world, the trans people are treated with the dignity they deserve. So I, I, I don't know that I can entirely just dismiss ever not ever going to Harry Potter world ever again. I guess we'll see. Like maybe if I, if I in a few years get to go again, and it feels weird, then I won't do it again. <laughs> you know, it's 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 very, it it's touch and go. A little bit but I certainly wouldn't wouldn't judge anybody who does decide right now to go to Harry Potter world and especially if like their kids are super excited about it because kids probably shouldn't be dragged into this whole mess um, just teach them what's right and let them figure out the rest but I do believe this this comes as a bit of a an open your eyes moment for a lot of parents out there because now there's something from Harry Potter that we, we have to explain to your kids. It's not just like read this and you know get whatever you want from it. It's you have to explain things to your kids and it's a bit retroactively important as well because there are things in Harry Potter that are pretty problematic and again these are things that other people have talked about way better than I ever could but you know there's the issue of the house elves or uh, werewolves being a you know a, an analogy for AIDS or just a bunch of stuff the Cho Chang stuff is weird there's a ton of stuff in Harry Potter that maybe you don't realize at the moment that you're reading it um, that it's problematic but eventually if you think about it enough and you sit with it for long enough and you discuss it with other people long enough you realize that yeah okay those things were pretty weird 
and then that's on top of all the <laughs> all the other stuff that J.K. Rowling just sort of dropped on us um, after the books were out, which I never, never enjoyed. That's always that weird with me. Um, because, you know, can I really say you're a great author if you don't adhere to the number one rule of authors, which is show, don't tell? I don't know. That was the start of my disappointment with J.K. Rowling and now it's come to a head, I guess. And I think it's important for parents to know that, sure, you can pass along your love of Harry Potter to your kids, even with this whole mess going on. Because if you can separate Harry Potter from J.K. Rowling's beliefs in your kids' minds, then I think that's a positive. And if you talk these points out with your key, with your kids, the problematic issues that are in Harry Potter, I think there's that most of everything else that happens in the story is salvageable and a positive lesson for your children. Just make sure to not ignore everything in there that is problematic. Um, so yeah, I think that's sort of where I'm at with all of this. It's I still love Harry Potter. I still consider myself a Harry Potter fan. I will not, you know, throw out anything that I own that is Harry Potter. I will not delete my fanfiction from the web um, because for me, Harry Potter represents more of a fandom than a specific book or movie or, or, or anything like that. It's it's the friendships I made through Harry Potter. It's, it's the lessons I learned through Harry Potter. Harry Potter, if I hadn't written Harry Potter fanfiction for so many years, I would never be as good a writer as I am right now. So I owe the Harry Potter fandom a lot and that is completely independent from J.K. Rowling. So in that sense, I will always love Harry Potter. I do, however, not plan on giving her any of my money if I can help it. So I will not be reading any of her books anymore. I will not be buying any merchandise. I definitely will not be going to watch the new Fantastic Beasts movie, though. You know, that was kind of already a thing because I hated the last one they made. It was and so, yeah, I wasn't planning on watching the third one anyway, but now it's like double the incentive to stay away. So, again, I can't tell you that that this is the right approach or that you should do exactly the same thing that I'm doing. It's very personal and it depends on whether you can emotionally separate the person that is J.K. Rowling um, and just the image of her from the book which I can up to a certain point. So for me in that sense, it's easier to just sort of go along like Harry Potter wrote itself. You know what I mean? But I know that not everybody can do that. I know that for some people it's like, nope, no Harry Potter, it doesn't exist not anymore. And that's fine. It's, it's up to you to decide um, where your line is. But again, I just want to make it very clear Trans people are valid, um, non-binary people are valid, it's okay to be different. Like, even though J.K. Rowling seemed to imply that in her books, and now she's apparently decided that, oh, she didn't mean that for everybody, she just meant that for some people, believe the meaning in the books don't believe what she's saying. Trans people are valid. Trans people are important. Trans people deserve support. Um, they go through a lot of hardships that us cis people would never understand. And it's not okay to treat them like they're not important or like they're existence is not valid and they should be respected 
all the time. So JK Rowling is wrong regarding that. She's transphobic. I do not support her. But the love of Harry Potter is going to stick with me for a while. Now, you probably won't see any Harry Potter exclusive or specific videos from me in this channel because again, I don't I don't want to give her any more of a platform than she already has. But I do still love Harry Potter. Like if you come and just strike up a conversation about Harry Potter, I'll be totally okay with talking about it. Because for me, Harry Potter is more than JK Rowling. Harry Potter is a community. It's a supportive community. Well, it can be. I mean, there are shit wars and shit, but like, <laughs> that's every fandom, right? But Harry Potter is, is a community. I've made so many friends through the Harry Potter fandom that I can't... That's what I think of when I think of Harry Potter these days, you know? The people I met, the lessons it taught me. And I think that's worth it. That's, that's worth holding on to, you know? Even if I'm not giving one more penny to that woman. So yeah, I just, I've been talking for 40 minutes. <laughs> This was way longer than I thought it was going to be, but I just had to talk about it because I think it's very important that everybody sort of make their stance when it comes to this thing. I'm not here to judge anybody, you deal with it however you see fit, but I hope you are dealing with it somehow because it, it, it is important to think about these things because there are people out there who don't have that privilege. And those of us who do should think everything about this through. So, yeah, that's it for now. Uh, I hope my next video is going to be shorter because I really should be working right now. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, that's it for me today. Um, I won't bore you with the usual closing spiel. Um, you guys know it's, it's all in the description, so be sure to check that out. But do give me a like and a subscribe and comment if you like um i'm not here for trolls so if you're gonna be controversial in the comments go ahead but i don't have to reply to you and if your comment is hurtful to other people um it's going to be moderated so just keep that in mind so yeah that's it for me today it's it was kind of a sober video i guess but I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you guys are dealing with, you know, just this whole mess as well, let me know how you do it, let me know if you still feel like you can love Harry Potter even though J.K. Rowling is a transphobe, or let me know if you've just sworn off anything Harry Potter from here until the end of time. So we'll see what the most popular... <laughs> reaction is. I don't know. Let me know in a comment. Again, please be respectful. You might hurt people with your comments, so don't try to be controversial. You won't get a rise out of me. I won't reply. You know, I'm not here for debate on other people's rights. I just think they should have them, and that's that. Um, and I will apply that philosophy to every comment that I get. So, yeah. Keep that in mind, and I will see you guys next time with another video from All The Way in Freaking Narnia. Bye, everybody. That J.K. Rowling is transphobic. 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 Process it in a different... Process it. Process it. Process it. In a different...